AI is really the defining technology of the century. And we have challenges in healthcare to do better, uh, to make it safer, to make it more affordable, to make it more effective, to make it more equitable. And it's hard to envision a world in which AI is not a key tool, if not the key tool, for improving all aspects of quality, safety, and operations. Fundamentally, a learning health system, one that uses the data not only for the direct care, but to improve care, relies uh, on information technologies. But the challenge to date has really been making sense of all of the signal. Uh, and um, the Joint Commission, Joint Commission International, uh, encourage the responsible use of, of, of health data uh, as a key element of a learning health system uh, and anticipate uh, as well as internally use uh, AI as a system for better health care. Well, let me answer your question in two ways. Um, we already use AI internally to improve inter-rater reliability. But I know the intent of your question is really how organizations use AI. And before we get to um, responsible use of AI, there's a more proximate step, and that has to do with the secondary use of health data. Just to, to define terms, secondary use um, uh, of data refers to uh, uses beyond um, the data that were created for a direct clinical purpose, for learning, for operations improvement, and so forth. And with input from Health Evolution, we introduced in the United States so far a responsible use of health data certification. It has six components. De-identification of data, data controls, really security, limits on use uh, of those data, transparency to patients, and an oversight governance structure that uh, assesses algorithm verification. Uh, technically, is the algorithm operating appropriately in terms of the clinical guidance uh, is correct. Uh, and importantly, a third competence, a cultural competence to understand if there are biases in the training data uh, or the capacity to detect drift if an algorithm goes um, uh, awry. And so we see that as a precursor to responsible use of AI certification. Now, to be really clear, I've used the word certification twice. We don't see this in the near term as being part of the accreditation specifically, but we see responsible use of health data certification as a voluntary assessment of appropriate secondary use of data. And we're working with others on developing responsible use of AI program uh, a certification for further in the future. I think it's really important to have an external validation uh, that your AI is, is working correctly. And that's why we think that certification program initially for responsible use of health data and ultimately AI is very important. Uh, but AI is so promising. I know that it's fashionable in safety and quality circles to say we wanna stop variation. I have a higher aspiration. Let's use AI to harvest variation. Let's use AI to find out not only what are the best practices, but what are the best practices that we didn't intuit? What's so wonderful about forms of AI is that um, sometimes um, machines uh, don't go in with a particular vision of what should operate, but particularly with machine learning, can apprehend patterns uh, that may not be ones that uh, we as humans look for. And so I'm very excited about the use of AI to improve care. And we're already seeing this uh, in India. Apollo Clinical Intelligence Engine is really quite remarkable. It's providing resources not only for caregivers, but for patients as well. And that really brings the two together, caregiver and patient, into a more productive interaction. I think one of the challenges is that we need to scale our regulatory oversight to the complexity of the use cases. Uh, Michael Hall uh, has written a terrific article uh, on the three epochs of AI. Um, in the simplest form, the probabilistic AI, which has really been around since the 50s, uh, is simply if-then statements. If the blood pressure is greater than thus, if the cholesterol is higher than thus, um, you know, let's not overburden where there's a clear link to the evidence uh, where then uh, is a very clear-cut response to a clinical condition. On the other hand, when you get to deep learning, um, different situation. Uh, use case might be automated reading of mammography. Uh, we need to make sure 
fact that the training data, as I mentioned earlier, is both technically correct, that the domain competence is there and the cultural competence is there to appreciate any um, potential biases. But that's a pretty sing clear cut single use case. When you get to foundation or generative or large language models where the use cases may not be foreseen, um, perhaps a different level of regulatory oversight uh, is required. Take home message really this, is that we need to have uh, an aperture between guardrails to prevent bad things from happening on the one side, but freedom from stifling over-regulation on the other uh, that would preclude the use of really, as I said, the defining technology of the century in improving all manner of safety and quality. That's a great question. And equity is a fundamental of quality and safety. And uh, to assure that AI offers the best to all, we need to assure that we have inclusive data sets. We need to have awareness and prevention of bias and training data. And we need to develop AI tools with the intent to enfranchise vulnerable populations and disenfranchised individuals. And if we intentionally address areas of health disparity, then I believe we can really realize the best of AI in addressing challenging situations. For example, maternal mortality, there are um, race and ethnicity-based disparities, certainly in the United States um, and around the world. But if we put all of these features together, I believe we can then arrive at safer, more timely, more effective, more efficient, more patient-centered, and importantly, more equitable healthcare. And that's why I'm excited about AI, and that's why I'm so excited uh, about the summit. Um, uh, so looking forward to convening with you uh, and uh, many friends and new colleagues.